Hello and welcome back to Exeter City. It's rather late as I'm recording this and we've got two important games to play. This could get interesting. I'll get you caught up. I mean, by and large, it's gone well, let's say. Obviously, you saw the 6-3 and the 3-2 against Brighton, 7-0 against Oxford. Bless them. They got to the quarterfinals. They're still in League One. That's quite impressive in its own regard. So props to Oxford there, even if we did put seven goals past them in the first hour and then decided that was enough. But a draw against Tottenham away and a loss against Man City away are, mu well, I'm going to say blemishes on our record, our otherwise faultless record in between that point. But yeah, Liverpool dealt with 5-1, Chelsea 2-1, their second. Aston Villa 5-0, three cup games in a row. West Ham and Newcastle in the league was a little bit tighter than I would have liked. So, all that means is we are top. Chelsea are four points behind. Arsenal have actually recovered a little bit into third. They were down in sixth last time I actually looked at this. Man United fifth, Spurs sixth. Yep, there's one missing from that. Roberto Martinez has just taken over Liverpool. Apparently Benitez to Everton wasn't enough carnage in Liverpool. He succeeds Steven Gerrard, who didn't do well. He's weirdly gone back to Aston Villa. I just love the fact he was manager of a Huddersfield for four seasons, it seems. But it's Liverpool we play first, and, well, that's the problem. There's no real transfer news to speak of. I did effectively take the next Harry Kane off Tottenham's hands, and that's about it. I don't really I don't really know why I bought an 18-year-old who you'll never see, but do need to let you know that Morato has broken his leg. It's a rare instance where a somewhat rash decision and overmanning one particular position has actually worked out in my favour for once, getting both Diaz and Demoral. No longer a stupid idea. Jared Randall is also out of this one with something. Can't remember what. Ruben Diaz has a cold. So we are down to Ampadu and Demoral for this one. Tabira and Smith are on either side. Why is Atamenge not on the pitch? Guess I rotated. They're both three stars now. That's interesting. Zobzai and Markovic in the middle. Samansky in front of them. Fernandez, Eduardo and Saunders for now because Prieto is apparently nowhere near as good anymore. And Aribe is just coming back to fitness. He should be right for this one, but off the bench. Yeah, so annoyingly, competition-wise, we're still in everything. Ironically, Ruben Diaz's cold might help stave off any jaded issues we may have coming forward. I didn't actually play him for any of the three cup fixtures at the beginning of the month. Neither Newcastle leg or the Swansea game, which, you know, gave him the breather that he wanted. So fingers crossed we should be able to play with Diaz for the remainder of the season. I don't really have any issues on that front. Zob's like, that's an interesting... Becker had to be alive to that. Why do I feel like Becker's announced his retirement? I don't know why I called him Becker either. Never mind, Carl Tadwato scored. Remember when I said I'd be furious if he didn't get World Player of the Year? Not even top three. Not even the goal 50. You know, the thing that he scored probably about 50 of. I can't be too mad he didn't win it because Harlan did get 51 in the calendar year as well. He's at PSG. That's bound to happen. But the fact that um, the fact that Carl Tadwato didn't even get a sniff annoys me intensely. Premier League Player of the Year, not even top three. Champions League winner and Premier League Player of the Year. Liverpool are moving this around and there's Alexander-Arnold with... Another Angelo, that might be the real Angelo. And we've gifted them a goal, which is always fun. I think he's onside. <sighs> who was the one who kicked it back? Was it Atamenge? I'm not fully certain what the animation was there. Was that Demoral passing it to them, or was it sort of like a weird ricochet? No, he just passed it to him, I think. Hard to tell. Looks like Demoral's rating's gone down, so I guess that's gone down as a mistake. I can see it on the uh, information boards. Lukaku is equalised for Arsenal at West Ham there. Their title retention chances are improved with that goal. Markovic, that's gone out to Tiberio. Back into Markovic again. Zobazlai, Atamenge on the left-hand side. Zobazlai won January goal of the month. That's the second our team has acquired. And, well, that was very well worked. We've had two goal of the month and someone got second. I don't know what's going on recently, but apparently we've decided to score bangers this year. This one, though. Very good goal for a very different reason. Just well worked. And actually, that is a back heel pass from Fernandez to Szymanski. That is a level of flair that I didn't know he had. I knew he was quick and could score, but I didn't know he had flair. And annoyingly, they've got away straight away. Alexander-Arnold coming down this right-hand side. Angelo, Mariba, Angelo, who has been actually nothing other than average for me at Hanover. I had him over there on stream. So, annoyingly, he's got that assist. They basically just did the same thing we did there. Passed it around our box and found somebody at the near post. Bash it in. It's weird how similar that was in just the general concept. <laughs> no back heel for Mangelo, but effectively the same goal. They're learning. One thing I say about Liverpool, they are playing Livermore on the wrong side of defence. Another person we had at Hanover, actually. Why have they got two of my Hanover team? 
In fact, I would have had a Ravello if I could have afforded him, and if you wanted to get there. <laughs> Szymanski, that should have been a goal. And then he bought their defender, Beedon. You can see, well, you can't see him because his name's probably behind my head, but he was on my list of defensive acquisitions, but Ruben Diaz won out just because he's a world-class player now, and that's what we needed. Alexander-Arnold finds Angelo. That's hit the post. We are away at Liverpool here, and whilst they have been relatively terrible in the league, we have given this a certain amount of regression in our formation. We've not gone for a calmer formation. We've gone for the all-out one. That should have really been a goal by Fernandes. He just sort of passed it to Alisson. It's Carcerado had a knock here. Paqueta scored for Arsenal against West Ham. Now, of course, in the game, Paqueta's not gone to West Ham, but that's an amusing goal nonetheless. Eduardo must have taken a knock. I'm confused what's happened there. Yeah, he's got marginally better as the half ended. I actually don't know who I'm playing in the Carabao Cup final now, but I think it was between Brentford and a championship team on the other side. We actually got the hardest of the three remaining and still beat them. Angelo, all the way across Livermento, who is, you know, naturally right-footed, but I think his left foot's okay. Now, if we can actually start playing football again, that would be lovely for my lads. We have four shots on target. A little hard to score goals if you don't kick him at the goal. All right, Carlos Eduardo, as good as he is, is going to have to come off because he's tired as all hell. He's got a bruised foot. Bruised foot. Bless him. The two central defenders combine and they've scored. Tabira is having a poor one as well. Nazri's on. And that, for some reason, cancelled the, uh, the replay. Why did me bringing on a player cancel the replay? Well, I'm not going to lie there. That looked like Liverpool tripped up their own player. Can I see a replay of that penalty incident? Because... I generally look like Pedro tripped over Angelo, and now they've got a penalty. Trent's the one to take it. I suppose he's good at set pieces, but what? I still want to see what happened with the penalty. Pedro gets the ball, and it's, well, apparently, is that Demoral again? Markovic is the one who's tripped him, even though he's nowhere near him. Sure. But we have a highlight from the kickoff, so this could be at least us getting back. Nope, never mind. We've decided to be rubbish today. Oh, Szymanski red card there was, well, I was about to say on the cards, but you know what I mean. Pedro, from distance, is it? You can see it coming. You can see it coming. Welcome. I'll do the formal welcome in a moment. We'll watch the goal again first. There we go. Welcome to the nonsense game, ladies and gentlemen and everyone else. We've not had it yet this season. Trent's been on a booking this entire game. Not put, not put another foot wrong, seemingly. Anytime you like, lads. Szymanski. Back out to Szymanski. Basuma got in the way. Well, Martin Saunders has got one back. I berated my lads before that one. That's probably not going to work now. I thought we were going to be two goals down. I mean, at the very least, I'm bringing you back to Golf Hill Games. If I'm not going to show you that many, you're getting your money's worth out of this. 6-3 and 3-2, was it, last time round? Well, we're 5-3 now. I suppose we're still two goals down. I forgot about the worldy that they just scored. It's Menge, Fernandez. I mean, five minutes of injury time. It'd be lovely to punish Liverpool injury time. Just for irony. Avalos. Alisson's kicked it back out again. Szymanski goes wide, finds Saunders. 5-4. Four minutes of injury time to find that equaliser and get a point. Why is Saunders good in this game? I mean, surely not. Allison's had a mare there. Damn it. They had 15 shots on target. Avalos has actually come out of that game with a seven. He's conceded five goals. Then Morel somehow ended up on a 6.3, despite being on a 6.0 about half an hour to go. Well, good news is Man City beat Chelsea in the 90th minute. Millwall got a win. They're on 13 points. Actually, Southampton on 17. It's not unreasonable. Meanwhile, Zlatan Ibrahimovic is favoured to take over Norwich. So at some point, my camera probably stopped moving. Um, yeah, apologies for that. It's a problem that I am aware of and know how to circumvent. I just forgot to circumvent it before I clicked record. That's the guy we know from Tottenham, by the way. 20 million up front. It's an English wonder kid to join the Stuart Smith who's already in the team and the Welsh wonder kid that came through our own academy and the Northern Irish wonder kid that we knew from Glenhaven recently. He's not great yet, but... It would have been nice to see them all develop together and have a proper United game. I'm aware there's no Scottish person. There is a Scottish player at Man United that I've tempted to nick for that purpose. But again, Ruben Diaz is world class. I can only build for the current season. So, bad news and good news. Bad news, Carlos Eduardo can't play this one. Good news, Ruben Diaz can. I've also put in Nazare right back because Tiberia has been, I want to say disappointing, but 6.99 average in a team that's top of the table says everything. Markovic... I think is a victim of the formation rather than just the performances. But they're kind of the only two letting the team down as a whole ratings wise. How old is Kurt Zuma in 2030? Because he's in their defense. 35. Physically actually still very good apparently. Also, you can see it above my head. Harry Kane, central midfielder. It's happened again. It happened in last year's save. They just started playing him as a central midfielder when he got older. He has the attributes for it. It's not weird. I mean, it's kind of weird. Font hoofs that forward. 
Nasri heads down to Arebo, who is in for this match as well. That's forgot to mention that. Arebo is in for Fernandez, who's tired. Fernandez is on the bench. He just figured give him give his legs a rest. Oh, there's Hosek, who's scored against us every single time. And not quite. Demorel, of course, we bought from Spurs. Don't forget that. So this is the well, it's not a homecoming. That's already happened. Weston McKenney on the left hand side of the midfielders. What are Spurs doing? It's like they're just trying to make do with the squad they had. It's like they've run out of money. Lafont moves it forward. Demorel. Ruben Diaz. They are playing 4-4-2 as well. Still got the same manager, Sergio Constachal, or however you pronounce that surname. Well, he's been in charge for a few years now. Jesus. Again, confusing that he's at Spurs. McKenney finds Lamptey. Dodges Zobber's light. We bought Lamptey at Newcastle, didn't we? Zobber's light finds no one. That's a shame. Lafont. Moves it forward. That's Ruben Diaz under it, though. Markovic. Zobber's light. Finds a rebate. That's a good run. Prazet. Oh, sword. That's lovely worked. Oh, that's beautifully worked. Don't go wrong, I thought Aribe was about to run and shoot himself there. That was even more special than I was anticipating. Oh, just thought about it there for a moment. Great run from Aribe. First time, first time. Oh, mugged him off. Number 14. Didn't know what he was doing. That might be Lamptey, judging by the size. It is. He's on 230 grand a week there. Didn't even pay that much. I didn't even pay him that much in Newcastle. Nazareth's on a 7.2, just worth noting. I do realise I never gave Atamenge a face. Um... Guess I figured it wasn't worth it for the final season. Yeah, I wasn't going to go for that rigby roll and potential danger of breaking the game again for the sake of the last season. That's not a penalty. Good, right. You are capable of even better. Do not let this lead go. We could afford to lose a game, and technically we can afford to lose another one because Chelsea slipped up as well. But come on, Prazet, Zobba's light, through the middle. There's Pereira. First time, 2-0. Pereira very much makes the most of the opportunities he gets. He's got 10 goals for the season, and I don't think he's had that many more starts. I wouldn't be surprised if his goals per minute, minutes per... I always get that wrong around, I don't know why. I wouldn't be surprised if his minutes per goal weren't much more than 90. The good news is a 2-0 up, I can definitely praise. Markovic is booked again, because of course he is. That's Uribe on the end of this one. Saunders back post, goes over him. Zobba's line to deliver, maybe. Atamenge to deliver. Anyone? Just someone. Thank you. I say, as soon as someone gets it in, Uribe is a back post. 22 goals for Uribe. This is his season. Somewhat stolen the shine from Carlos Eduardo, I think, actually, this year. I do wonder how many Carlos Eduardo's goals last season were scored before Christmas. That might be why he didn't win things. Hang on, I'm confused by Spurs. They brought on two players. They brought on three players, and some of them aren't fit. Pretty soon, Iago and Buzio are new to the pitch, and neither of them came on in green. <laughs> what have they been doing at Spurs? Why are their players knackered? Uh, Zobosley is going to come off for Segovia. I guess Asamenge can save some time here. Stuart Smith on for the last 18 minutes or so. Get him his 15 minutes and a rating. Didn't actually cancel the corner, interestingly. That's because we've hit the post with it via Diaz. Saunders, good save. Another corner. Govrion, of course, neither Szymanski or Zobzlai on the pitch to take these. It's a Govrion on both sides. Diaz close again. But this is what I've been more used to this season rather than the games that we've just had against Newcastle and Liverpool which haven't been quite as once. Why are Demorel and Ruben Diaz absolutely knackered? That makes no sense. I mean, Demorel I kind of get because he played the last game, but Ruben Diaz has no excuse for that. He played one game last month, as he's taken a knock of some kind. I guess the AMC role is particularly tiring because Prazet's also completely knackered just by playing, well, not playing the last game either. Because I've always noticed that Szymanski seems more tired than anyone else. I always thought it was just something to do with Szymanski, but it might genuinely just be the position. Nazari. Tire's not ended. There we are. Game over, 3-0. Nice. 30 shots, 12 on target. Not a bad conversion, right? Temporarily seven points clear, but we've played a game that the others haven't. <sighs> I somehow dodged doing this with Fernandez. I agreed a deal, then I tried to put an extra year in the deal afterwards because it just sort of auto-clicked through and I didn't get a chance to negotiate. So I tried to negotiate and of course they didn't like it, so I clicked walk away. And it seemed to have made everything fine. Nobody seemed to care. I don't really know what happened, but then Fernandez himself came to me later on and said, oh, I might want a new contract, boss. And I talked, like, as soon as I went to him, he backed off. So I seem to have dodged having to give Fernandez 100 grand a week off his 20 that he's currently on. I don't think Aribe, sorry, I don't think Aribe wants anything extraordinary in his contract. No, but he does want to improve it by over 100 grand is what he wants to do. Herrera's still on six. But yeah, we already agreed that it would be the Champions League first knockout round. Second leg with Burnley that follows for the next video. And then I'll bring you back at the end of the season, whatever that might entail. Two episodes to go. It's a slightly scary prospect. Actually, it's weird that this is nearly over and FM23 is nearly with us. But if you've enjoyed this, do like, comment, subscribe. You know the deal by now. Until next time. ta -ra.